Do you use snippets? No, when you say snippets, I think of like little chunks of code I get from like a gist or something like that. Pretty close. You don't use snippets in like Sublime Text or... No, know. like I've look, I'm looking at them right now and I have them, I don't know what they are. I'm, uh, I'm deducting a point from my Yelp review of you. How can I have a Yelp, like, a score? Like, I'm not a place. You have... People can visit you. You're totally a place. I feel like there's going to be one review and it's just you. It's just and it's going to be anonymous. <laughs> and it's just like, worst person ever. These are your words. So not, what, not mine. <laughs> what, are, um, what are snippets? So snippets are basically reusable chunks of code that you use in your daily workflow. Stuff that, you know, you find yourself writing out a lot that would probably benefit from automating a tiny bit. Yeah, so things like ES6 classes where you, you've you got to have the class keyword, name of the thing, brackets, curly brackets, whatever, and then, like, that's just boilerplate. That's always going to be the case. Yeah. So you could just have a snippet, add that in, and then just all you got to do is change the class name. Yeah, and the, it's it's kind of neat because you can you can create your own snippets, you can go and customize them. There's whole packages of snippets depending on, like, the libraries you're using. So also you can just, like, import someone else's yeah. snippets. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's kind of neat. Um, there's a bunch of snippets that I, I find myself using pretty often. Um, the first set are the uh, sort of JavaScript and Node snippets from Zeno Rocha. Okay. And this is kind of a really neat step because it covers everything from little expansions for adding event listeners to your DOM nodes, creating elements, creating like fragments. If you're working on prototypes, um, mm -hmm. it'll give you a nice little expansion for that. And it'll also like highlight the relevant piece of code that you're probably going to want to change, like the name of the, the name the of the, the, the class, the yeah. prototype, and the function. Nice. Yeah, which is kind of useful. And also it does like other things like uh, scaffolding out your, your IIFEs or IFEs. IFEs? IFEs. What are IFEs? They're like yeah, immediately invoked functional expressions. You're just you're raising more questions than you're answering. When you're just saying words. Where it's there's a there's a blog post by Ben Allman you can go check out it covers all of this stuff. Okay. It, it has a great Yelp review. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> From you. From me. What other snippet packages do you do you have? So you've been using ES6 a bunch lately, right? Yeah. What what, what do you like in ES6? What are you using? Um, it's mostly classes. Um, I've started getting into fat arrow functions. And promises I've been using for a little while, just because of service workers and all the other yeah. stuff like that. Those are the main things. Okay. So there's a really decent package called ES6 Toolkit that includes um, snippets for promises, classes. Um, for classes, it's really neat because it'll give you, again, it'll highlight, it'll scaffold out the whole class with the constructor. And it'll also highlight the section of code that you probably want to change mm. first, which is kind of nice. Um, it also does fat arrows, um, generators, weak maps, sets. So those things are not played with. It sounds like this might actually be a nice way of learning about yeah. the new ES6 features. Yeah, I think so. And it, I think they've also got, um, have you used the object literal shorthands in ES6? So the basic idea there is that like you don't have to type out as much code. Like we reduce the boilerplate for functions and things. Mm. It also supports that and modules too. It's kind of nice. neat. There's ES6 Toolkit. Um, another set that I find myself using pretty often is the Polymer and Web Component Snippet Package by Rob Dodson. Yep. And that's useful because it helps you when you're writing not just apps but also like uh, your own elements. So yes. let's say you're, you're creating a demo page for your app. It's got an expansion that will write out all of like the boilerplate code for your meta tags. It'll include the web component polyfills. And then you can just go and start creating your own elements. And when you're doing that, there's a few things you always end up doing, like um, writing HTML imports. And he's written, um, Rob Dodson's written like this little shorthand uh, HI mm. for let's just like saying, OK, well, HI, uh, do me the entire line that I require for, for yes. writing an import. Or write me out all of the, the boilerplate code I need for my element. I must admit that is the one like criticism I have of Polymer. Like I like the notion of just being able to pull in some component just using it on my page. It's it's all the stuff around it. Like you have to add it to your bower, you have to add it to the, the actual HTML of your page, and you've got to add in the HTML import. And it's just like those steps are at a point where I'm like, I just want this thing to exist. Can you just make magic happen? So anything that simplifies that. I think is yeah. really nice. If, if only you had a, a friend slash colleague that, that wrote something, a Polymer starter kit that can potentially yeah. help you there. Name I'm drop. Done. Name yeah. drop. Just drop in. Um, so for people using other libraries, and there's a ton of other libraries out there, there's things like uh, frameworks like Ember, things like Angular, Angular 2, and so on. React. Um, React. Yep. Um, 
There's actually a really good set of packages that you can check out for those as well. The React one's, uh, I think, pretty popular. Works well with Babel. So, yeah, nice. check, check them out. So the next time there's a new hot framework on the side, there'll just be a brand new package for snippets, and then boom. Yes.